I really just try to execute everything at this point in my life at 80%. Like I'm not gonna make the perfect post. I'm not gonna have the perfect workout. I'm not gonna make the perfect decision. I'm not gonna be perfect on a sales call. I'm not gonna be perfect as a husband. I'm not gonna be perfect as a friend. But man, if I can get 80%, I'm gonna head that direction. It's like this floor and ceiling. Like a perfect routine is like I read for 30 minutes. I have my coffee. I meditate. I cold plunge. I sauna. I go for a walk. Like we can make this like perfect 90 minute routine. Some days I'm gonna dip my head in a in the tub cold plunge or I'm going to take a three minute cold shower. I'm going to walk around the block for five minutes. I'm going to read one page and shoot my coffee as I walk out the door. But it's like, it's not, I'm going to do nothing today and then feel bad about it. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. And in today's episode, it's a little bit more of a personal development episode because personal development across the board has changed my life. Like most of these books, if you're watching the YouTube video that are behind me are all on personal development. And it's my understanding of personal development um, and the character traits that go into that and mindset and headspace stuff and psychology is what's helped transform uh, and build the, the dying from the inside out side of things, okay? Now, in today's episode, I have a very special guest with me, and this is more of a, again, a personal development episode because it's not just about being successful in weight loss and in dieting, but in life in general. Now, dieting from the inside out helps with all of that because it's like the old saying goes, wherever you go, there you are. So in this episode, I, I, there's, a, there's a person that I met a couple years ago that uh, we become really good friends and he's become someone that I look up to, uh, a good friend of mine and someone I actually seek counsel from and help from in, in different areas. And I wanted to have a podcast episode with him. And I shot him a message just the other day and he was instantly ready to go. And this is my friend, Mike Croson, because Mike has been successful in so many areas of his life across the board. Um, and I wanted to talk with him about just some of these success principles as a whole on how to be successful, not just in like weight loss and in this transformation game, but across the board in life. Cause Mike has done a, a done a lot. He has been uber successful in the entrepreneurship world and back in the days when he was in bodybuilding and in business. And now he literally helps uh, he literally helps other businesses scale and build their businesses and have bigger impact and all these different things. Um, as well as when it comes to a lot of this stuff, he, he didn't have the greatest, uh, cards dealt to him, so to speak. Um, cause we see a lot of these people that are really successful and we just think, Oh, they've just always been successful or, Oh, it's just always been given to them or things like that. Well, that's not quite the case with Mike. Mike, um, did not have the greatest cards dealt to him in life. Um, but he is the epitome of the story of overcoming and how to literally make what it is you want out of life a reality. So that's why I wanted to have Mike on the, on the, uh, on the, the, the podcast again, to talk about just some of these principles on how to be successful across the board and in your relationships and in like in work and in business, um, in your weight loss in dieting in any endeavor at all, because success, like the old saying goes, leaves clues. And one of the most powerful things that forever changed my life is I just started listening to really successful people, regardless of what industry they were in, right? And just learning from these people who have achieved not only what it is I want, but just in general, like, you know what, if they're successful in this area, this area, this area, and this area, I bet there's some stuff I can learn from them. And so that's why I, I choose to have these connections and friendships and things like that. But it's why I want to have Mike on the show because Mike is a wealth of knowledge and, uh, and I have watched him grow over the past couple of years and just our friendship. Um, and he's helped my life tremendously. And so that's why I want to have him on the show. So be sure and stick around for the whole thing. I know you will get a lot out of it. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you in just a second. Cool, dude. Well, here's the thing. Here's why I wanted to, wanted to have you on, why I wanted to talk because I wanted, this is a little bit different flavor. I've never done a podcast quite like this before, but, okay. um, I want to talk about, cause, and I think you're one of the perfect people to talk about this cause you've had a track record of success in multiple, multiple, multiple areas, right? Like a lot of times we talk about like success in like fat loss or in transformation or in whatever, but you've had this track record from business to business <laughs> to business, to your own transformation, to your, uh, your maintaining of your own levels of like this stuff as well, financially in leadership and in all these different areas, you've, it's like, you've kind of, it's like it, from the outside looking in, like you've cracked the code, right? Where it's like, uh, there's a, it's, it's not just like, you didn't get lucky once. It's not like you were shredded and had abs or like got big old delts or something, but like everything else floundered. 
And especially knowing what I know about like the way you grew up and all that stuff, like one may even say like, like the cards were not in your favor starting out either. Right. So, but somehow you've managed to become super successful in several areas of your life. So if there, so what I wanted to talk about with you was like what you think the reason for that is like, what are these, all these areas in life that you've been successful and have in common and what were some of like these success principles, if you will. Like I said, I've never really done a podcast on like more just being successful in a broader sense, but mm -hmm. from the concept of like dieting from the inside out and in who you are, wherever you go, there you are kind of concepts, I think it would be a good discussion. So yeah, let's, uh, let's dive <laughs> in. I've got tons of theories, I guess, potentially. Okay. Um, what that is. And yeah, so I think there's going to be some definitely some good takeaways from it. There's also some harsh realities. Yeah, <laughs> to go with it. right, right. So, so like, well, so what are some of the first things that are coming up? Like when I say that, what comes up for you? Um, consistency, I would say is the first thing. Um, and then also like there is no other option. Mm. So for example, when I left Alabama and moved to New York with no job, I didn't think like I'm going to fail. I just thought I'll just figure it out. Like you'll just you'll just make it work. And everything I've accomplished or I go after, it's like, well, I mean, there is no turning around. Mm. You'll just figure it out and make it work. Yeah. It might not be the direction which you wanted to go per se, but backwards is not, is not on the table. You know, you've heard the phrase like, you know, burn the boats. Um, and it's not that I oftentimes take a full plunge into something with no options. However, if I'm wanting to go in one direction, then I start to just guide everything in that direction and be like, well, there is no veering off of this. This is where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So for me, when it comes to eating, right, and this is – I'm controversial on this topic to some degree because to me, when it comes to like maintaining a physique or achieving a goal or you know doing a bodybuilding show and zero cheating on the diet unless told otherwise – what other option do I give myself? It's either you do it or you don't. Mm. There is no, yeah, but I had a bad day or, you know, my feelings are this. It's like, mm. F your feelings. Like that is not a part of the program. That's not a part of the end result. That's not where we're trying to go. And so for me to, to get off the diet or not do the 60 minutes of cardio and stop at 55, like that's just me saying F it. Mm. And so for me, it's like, the only reason that you don't do something is because you actually just don't care. Because if you truly cared, you would complete the thing. Yeah. Right? Like we as parents, I'm not a parent, but parents like there is no option of trying to keep your kid healthy and alive. Yeah. There is no like, well, F it right now. It's like, no, like that's not an option. So I just take the approach of like, there's no other options mm -hmm. whenever I make a decision. And so whether it's going to New York and figuring it out or moving back home and said, I'm going to figure it out, moving to LA, I'm going to figure it out, starting a new business, I'll figure it out. It's just learning and moving forward and being consistent and showing up every single day. Yeah. One thing I've never been afraid of is the work. Um, and there isn't really an effort button for me. Um, not when I want to accomplish or do something. When I want to date mm -hmm. a girl. It's no other option, man. We're like this. We're going all in on this, yeah, yeah. right? Um, whether it's you know, and my my wife now, Paula, like the one thing that we or I did was, how does a guy from Dallas have a coffee date with a girl in St. Louis? Like I was going to drive up to have a coffee. Like was another an option, right? Like this is what I wanted to do, so I was going to make it happen. Whether it's starting a business or losing weight or competing in the shows, like. Mm -hmm. I just went forth with no other mindset than like, we're going to get this done. Mm. And, and then the hard part on that is like the other people around you in your life, either they get on board with that or they don't, but sure. I'm not asking for permission. Mm -hmm. I, th you know? I, I think it's interesting when, when you said like, I didn't give myself an option um, or with any of this stuff is I think that's, I think that's, that's the key though, is I think so many people, and I have the same conversations with people, whether it be their, their goals or who we're coaching with, or if it's a coach talking to me about their business, it's the amount of people who leave as a viable option on the table, giving up, failing or what have you. Um, 
or or they negotiate if they're going to follow the plan. Well, I'll keep making pro I'll keep showing up if the scale's trending down. I'll keep mm. doing the thing if I'm making money, if my launch goes well, or I'll yeah. keep doing the thing <laughs> if I feel like it, you know. I, th I think that's a really big thing you're hitting on there is that it's this all or nothing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I've ever really approached. I take that back. I was going to say there's never an approach where it was like 100% or zero. Um, I really just try to execute everything at this point in my life at 80%. Mm. Like I'm not going to make the perfect post. I'm not going to have the perfect workout. I'm not going to make the perfect decision. I'm not going to be perfect on a sales call. I'm not going to be perfect as a husband. I'm not going to be perfect as a friend. But man, if I can get 80%, I'm going to head that direction. Yeah. And here's the thing. like I would consider myself to wanting to be a high achiever some self-doubt in there mm. <laughs> with, with wanting to be a high achiever, being a high achiever for some, like, let's say somebody's in shape and everything else in their life doesn't necessarily like match. And they take this all or nothing approach, right? Like a great, like a business coach, for right. example. Right. I always say, man, if you'd show up for your business, like you do your fitness, you get 1% better every day. Mm. If you show up as a husband, as you do your job, you'd become a better communicator with your wife or be a better husband, be a better father every single day. So it's like we have areas in our life, most of us, where we crush it and we're really good at showing up and being consistent. It's just in that area that we're lacking, we just actually don't want it. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference is, is that separates those that find success in multiple areas is doing the thing they don't want to do like they love it. And I stole that from mm. Mike Tyson. It was like, do the things you hate like you love it. Because okay. again, like there's no other option. Emotions do not get a vote in my goals. Mm -hmm. One thing that I say a lot is, is hold space for emotions. Yes. But listen, but, but abide by them and let them control your actions. No. Like if you feel like shit, you don't want to do the thing. Cool. We can feel I, I'm allowed to feel unmotivated, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to execute on the goals that I set for myself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I went to the gym this morning, sat in my car for 30 minutes. I saw that on your story today. Right. <laughs> and people would consider me to be the guy that's the most consistent. And I went in there and I got a sweat on. But, you know, my fitness, you know, I always say is like, hey, man, if I can just just show up to the gym. And like, that is a win. Mm. I don't have to have the perfect workout. And just because I don't have 90 minutes doesn't mean I don't do anything. Right. You have to set, I think also too, um, good buddy of mine, Matt Vincent said this, it's like this floor and ceiling. Like a perfect routine is like, I read for 30 minutes. I have my coffee. I meditate. I cold plunge. I sauna. I go for a walk. Like we can make this like perfect 90 minute routine. That's a great day. That's the ceiling. Some days, I'm going to dip my head in, a, in the tub, cold plunge, or I'm going to take a three-minute cold shower. Um, I'm going to walk around the block for five minutes. I'm going to read one page and shoot my coffee as I walk out the door. And be like, <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's not, I'm going to do nothing today and then feel bad about it. Mm. It's like, we got to, like, it's the effort of trying that is consistency. Mm. It's not being your best that's consistent because being consistent allows you to become your best. Showing up one day a week perfect is terrible in comparison to showing up seven days a week at 80%. Mm -hmm. But also, here's the thing too people do. And I think this is what really separates a lot of business owners from where they're trying to go in fitness too, is that well, I, my goal is to post, um, let's say, seven days a week. But my minimum is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I film three videos on Monday or Sunday, for example. And then you should post on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Or you look at it and go, well, my minimum is three, so I'm going to save these. And so, well, no, that's your goal that you put in mind because you are now shooting for the floor on yeah. the first day of the week. Right. So it's like you should put in the energy and effort and say, that's one day we start over now. Mm. That's so Because good. it's like if your goal is to lose, let's say, five pounds a month and you lose two in one week, does that mean you just cash in for two weeks of the month? 
Like, no. Right. Right. You still show up the next week with the same intentions. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think that's the energy and effort that we put in is like too often we pat ourselves on the back for what we've done and we forget about what it is we're still trying to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many people that are trying to lose 100 pounds lose 65 and never make it because all they talk about is the weight they lost. They don't talk about the weight they still have to lose. Mm. Because so many people also are like, dude, you've lost 65 pounds. Like, that's incredible. And they hang their identity on what they've lost, not their journey of where they're trying to go. Sure. And so nobody encouraged them to keep losing the 45. Mm. Right? There's no more drive or push to keep that going because, we, again, we pat ourselves too much on the back and we forget, hey, this race isn't over. Yeah. I, th I think but we've done a good job, you know. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off at all. Um, I, th I think there's a, I think there's such a dichotomy there, right? Because I'll mm. I, I, I see on both ends of the spectrum where 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 because I agree with you where where if people, we get too comfortable and we forget about like no we we're not where we want to be yet. But then I also see it the other way. I see people that their whole they they don't honor any of their wins or any of the progress they made. Mm. They're like they're they're down sixty five pounds. They're like fuck me. I've I've still got 45 to go. I'm such a failure. I don't know why I should even try. And it's like, hold up. You, you're crushing it right now. And yeah, I, th I think totally. there's a dichotomy there, right? There is. And I, I think it's um, – you celebrate your wins, but um, we don't get a gold medal when we've delivered a, a bronze performance. Mm, yeah. And so it, I think it's just that continue to pursue because – Again, floor and ceiling, right? Like, let's say your floor is 50 pounds and your ceiling's 100. Are you still showing up to go after the ceiling? Or are you showing up and say, well, I hit my floor, mm -hmm. so... Right? Yeah. And so we stopped putting that same type of energy that helped us lose that first 65 pounds. Yeah. And so I think that becomes the difference. And some people might like, Mike, you take a hard-ass approach. I'm like, well, this is a hard world. And... If you want to be soft, it will run you over. Mm -hmm. And you'll run yourself over in the process with your emotions. Yeah. Because self-sabotage obviously is the number one thing that leads to lack of results. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not your biggest fan, who is? Mm. Um, so I'm like super proud of everything that I've done. At the same time, feel that I'm not enough from an outside standpoint. Just so we talked about this in the past with my childhood. Yeah. So that's something I've had to overcome. And I've spent a lot of money in coaching to become <laughs> the person which I am today. Yeah. And I think for me, understanding that uh, wherever you're at in the journey, you're still just on a path because there actually is no true destination. And for me, I find that my worth is in the work, mm -hmm. not in the destination, which is why I don't think there's ever a destination for me, mm -hmm. which is also why I think I've just been consistent in a certain appearance that I try to keep as far as being in shape and showing up to the gym because it's the journey. I'll give you a great example. The last show that I did in 2018 I was backstage and I was sitting back there and the thought crossed my mind. What am I doing here? Hmm. Everybody backstage is on fire. Like they're so pumped and excited and they're nervous. And I'm just like, can I go home? Is this over yet? And for me, the fire was lost because it wasn't about the show. It was about all the prep it took to get to the show. That was the fun part. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I've come to learn that it's like, it's the process of getting there. It's not cashing the paycheck. It's building the system that was able to create the paycheck. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's the building blocks in the process of like creating and doing and, and putting things into place. So if you find yourself so focused on the end result, I think you might not ever get there. I would, I would agree. You enjoy the work it takes to get there. Yeah. One of my, one of my favorite uh, artists, uh, he's a hip hop artist. It's Russ. If you follow Russ at all, um, Russ talks about um, his whole concept is, is the journey is everything. It's cause it's where you spend your every waking second 
Like you get like I this actually was a big uh, it hit me hard when I got my blue belt in jujitsu because uh, mm-hmm. and, and where because um, it, well, it took me like three and a half years to get it. But like it was dope for about 30 minutes. I got I got the first color belt and I'm like, everyone's high five and we're so proud of you. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. And after about 30 minutes, it was over. Like, so three and a half years of work, three and a half years of roles, three and a half years of getting my ass beat, three and a half years of me beating ass, three and a half years of all this. And I was like, yeah. And then it was over. And I recently got my purple belt. And so then, uh, and it was the same thing. I had more perspective this time, but it was the same thing. But, but when I go to train, I don't, I could give two shits what my belt color is. I don't even care about the next belt like Brown. Now it's weird to think about, but I don't even care about that. I just love training being Mm. on in the journey and every, what's funny is if we put a little more of a philosophical vibe on this, everything you just described of doing the work, the journey is, is you're describing being present and in, in the now mm. because that's it's, the it's surrender to the worry. Yes. Yeah. You have to stop worrying. I made a post about this the other day. So I've recently reconnected with uh, Christ. And one of the things that I fully did was just stop worrying. Mm. When you just start doing and stop worrying, man, your life changes. Because you stop worrying about being hungry. You stop worrying about where your next meal is coming from. You stop worrying about can I pay for this or can I pay for that or what so-and-so is going to think. It's just like, can we just pause for a second? If you're here now, think about what things actually mean from a different perspective. It's like people's like, dude, I'm just so busy. I'm like... So you mean you're making money mm. or you're, or you're complaining because you, you're making money. I, I'm not sure <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah. Right. And so oftentimes though we make rash decisions based on pain. But the thing about it is that I've come to learn is that there is no good nor bad. There just is. And we decide whether something is a good or bad emotion. And so you can view hunger as negative or positive. Mm-hmm. You can view fullness as a negative or positive. You can view um, somebody cheating on you, negative or positive. Yeah. Everything in life, you get to determine whether it's good or bad because the truth is it just is. And then society standards like to put a label on it. Mm. But if there are no labels, then there are no emotions attached to those things. And you have now full control over everything that happens in your life. Mm. And that's where I'm essentially getting to now to where it's like, Something can happen big, and I'm like, all right, so what do we – we'll figure it out. What are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of one of those things where I'm just putting it in God's hands, right? Yeah. And it's just the faith of understanding, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be just fine no matter what. Mm. And I think that's the, the, the level that it takes to find that stillness to be present that you're talking about to where it's like – it's just perspective is really just being present of, like, where we're at right now. Like – I'm hungry, but am I, am I going to die? Mm. No, I'm okay. Then don't make rash decisions. Don't whip off the highway and be like, I got to get something to eat. And it's like, no, you could probably wait because people fast every day in starving countries. You, you're going to be good. Mm. And so it, it's for me just making decisions based off of a good place of mind now versus a worry mindset. And that's another one too, is like understanding like scarcity versus abundance. Mm-hmm. I think it's a big one. Um, and I've really leaned into the abundance mentality, which means like no matter what happens, like we're going for it. There's no competition, right? There is like obviously I was gonna say there's no evil, but like obviously there is. But it's like I'm not peeking around the corner looking for evil. You know, I yeah. want to be in this mindset of like I want to ab- abundantly bring all the things my way that are gonna fill me up and give me joy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think seeking out those things are what's going to separate you from actually finding success because you'll find that people that lose the weight is are best here, right? This is like the definition of like dieting from the inside out, right? Yeah, it's like if you're clear here, then everything else becomes yeah. easy. Yeah. I think I that mean, applies to everything. Yeah, I mean, I think if we go that route, like we, I mean, we we attract what we are. Right. So for example, if, if you, if all you see is lack or if all you're like, I've got, I'm let's we'll say like, uh, when I say hungry, not even necessarily like physically hungry, like hungry for a result, I want to make the money. I want to lose the weight. Now I'm desperate yeah, for this. I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. Well, that means you're in a state of lack. So you're going to find more lack, you know, 
If I'm like, I got to make money now, it's because I'm energetically like, I'm broke as fuck. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or it, I think it's I think it's why, like in weight loss, the person who's like, I want the scale to drop so bad, it doesn't. And as soon as they go, I don't give a fuck. It's like the next day that thing drops. Or uh, as soon as someone quits chasing like their, I found this out in business. Um, uh, by no means am I a business guru or expert, but I have been in the entrepreneur, entrepreneurship game for the past 13 years. And I've, I've learned a lot uh, of the wrong way of stuff. And I found whenever like, uh, let's say business or times are a little bit r- harder. Um, I, I, I'm like, I have to make money now. I have to like, Oh shit. Like that's a big tax bill or that's a big, whatever. It's just like, I attract the worst things possible. But when I have a sense of knowing and like, no, I'm the source of my own abundance. I'm, a, I'm connected to source. I, uh, there's a spiritual teacher that I studied a little bit more now. And he says like, uh, abundance isn't always like just bringing in more money. It's, it's, it's being aware of what here is now having what you need when you need it. Even if that may mean someone picked up my meal the other day at, at, at a, at a restaurant, I didn't get money, but like that was abundance. Or I had someone reach out to me and just said, I love what you're doing. I want to coach with you. That's abundance, you know, or, um, these kind of things where is becoming aware of what's here right now. And, as with you, I'm in a state right now of, of a lot more letting go and surrendering. Uh, I was at a, an event in LA, this more spiritual event. And I had one of the biggest breakthroughs I've ever had. Um, like when I say I cried out my 13 year old self, that is exactly mm. what happened. It happened to be in front of 40 other people. So that was a, an experience. Yeah. It's, but it was beautiful. And, um, and I literally asked the guy that, that was, he's a mentor of mine. I go, how do you, I, 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 this was like, I felt ignorant saying this and I go, and this is when I lost it. And I go, how do you surrender? How? Like for me, my whole life I've spent, like, I have to carry this load on my back. Anyone else will hurt me. Anything else will hurt me. I have to make sure nothing bad happens, but obviously that we can't do that. And especially if you look in the world of like God and the universe and all this stuff where it's like my minuscule intellect is nothing compared to the unknown of what's supposed to be. It's like, who am I? It's like the way they worded, like, Oh, look at in, in a, in, in a healthy way. It's like, Oh, look at this little guy thinking he has to carry it all. Oh, look mm-hmm. at the, it's like a kid trying to like pull the wheelbarrow. It's like, Oh, look at him trying. He thinks he has to do this all on his own. And I literally asked the guy, I'm like, how, how do I surrender? How do I do it? I'm, I'm open. And that's when surrendering happened and I fucking lost it. But then that version of me now shows up everywhere else, you know? So, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk a little bit about mm-hmm. that because it's funny. My wife mentioned it this morning. She's like, "I need to fully surrender." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I, I, I think so too." Mm-hmm. You have a lot of stress that overtakes you, and all these other things pulling us, and like we create our own hell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We create our own environment that we beat ourselves up in, or things that we don't like. Right. Mm -hmm. Not prefer. Like there's two things that I try not to use. And it's the word can't and hate. Mm. Because those are things that I'm projecting into my life. And like you said, like you are, you attract what you are. And if I'm saying I can't do something, then I am now immediately just saying like, there's zero opportunity for me to achieve this goal. Yeah. So like when I'm talking to somebody that's like dieting, like, oh, I can't do that. I'm like, damn right. You can't. Mm. Not with that attitude. You just told me you couldn't. Yeah. Right, right, exactly, right. Um, so it's like there's a lot of things I'm like, you know, I catch myself and I'm like, I, it's not that I can't, I don't want to. Going back to achieving the result, you just don't want to bad enough. Mm. So that's where the sacrifice. So, um, man, I'm going to butcher it. There's a phrase that I heard um, if you're not willing to sacrifice for your goal, your goal will be the sacrifice. I've never heard that, but that's beautiful. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I just thought was really powerful. So it's actually funny enough. So I wanted to get two tattoos, my first ones ever, and I wanted uh, discipline and sacrifice because I was like bodybuilding, thinking like that's hardcore. But that's been the definition of a lot of what I've done is discipline yeah. and showing up and sacrificing things to make that thing happen. Um, but let's talk about, man, you uh, – the surrender for you. What was the overwhelming emotion that hit that you felt when it, it just came on? I think there's layers to it. There's like, um, 
It's, it's like uh, awareness. You don't just get to enlightened. You don't just get to like, all right, I'm the most aware I'll ever be. It's, it's like, a, <laughs> it's like there's levels to it. So I'm at the highest level I've ever been. Uh, there's still, there's, here's the thing though. Right now there's still triggers that come up. There's still patterns of like, ah, fuck. Mm-hmm. And I have to go do the thing. But, um, it was when I, for me, when it really happened was when I realized I don't trust anything else outside of me. That's when it hit. I go, the reason I don't surrender, the reason I don't trust is because I'm afraid I'll get hurt. I'm afraid the bad thing will happen. I'm afraid, well, what if I surrender and the business crashes or if the the thing that I'm working on fails or if I'm putting all my eggs in this basket and it didn't work and I'm fucked. Um, and this, the hardest part about surrendering is you are becoming a space of love for the one thing you don't want to happen. So for me, I found at the bottom, if I like dug this thing deeper for my issues with surrendering and trusting is, uh, I didn't want to experience whatever the thing is, the, the hurt, the, 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 the being hurt, being broke, being like my dad, like it, like we drove this thing to the ground. Cause the way, like the guy that was helping facilitate this with me was like, cool, then what? And what, like, I don't want to feel, uh, like, let's say I, how do I surrender or whatever? And he's like, cool. Well, what, what's happening? And I'm like, uh, let's say I'm feeling, uh, overwhelmed or I don't want to, I don't want this result to happen. So what happens if that happens? What if you lose the business? Then I go broke. Okay. What happens if you go broke? I go homeless. Well, what happens if you go homeless? I'm like my dad. Whoa. Like it, like we, like, they're like, I was like, you know, whatever the thing was, or, or a lot of times people will have this like, oh, I'll get hit again. Or I'll get yelled at like when I was six. And it's like mm-hmm. we have this inner six-year-old or 10-year-old or whatever that is all that that just isn't being seen. So for I can tell you in my success journey, I built my business out of fear of being like my dad who went bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Like and 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 it rocked my family. And then the divorce happened, and then like all the uncertainty in my family. Like literally, that's when shit got real. So mm-hmm. for me, I go, ah. I'd, I'm going to build a really successful business out of fear of being like my dad and making my whole family go down the toilet. That's not sustainable. Just like if the daughter that said, I'm, I'm, I'm chunky. The girls at school made fun of you. Let's get you shredded because the girls at school are making fun of you. It's the same thing. So for me, it's getting awareness around that. And then as hard as it is becoming a space of love, allowing that to be here. And I had a really hard time loving that part of me. There's a beautiful book. It's called no bad parts. And I had a really hard time loving those parts of me that are the darkest, the most painful. But at the end of the day, it's a six year old kid. It's a 10 year old Jared and becoming that space of love heals. And that's what helped me start to let go. And then actually choosing to let go. It's just like we say, love is a verb. It's not just an ushy gushy feeling. I believe letting go is also a verb. I believe it's not just something you, that like an enlightened state you get to. I believe it is a conscious choice of I'm choosing to surrender. I'm choosing to let go. Do you ever catch yourself asking why? Why to what part of it or just any of it? Just in general. Um, you know, people are like, why did that happen to me? Or why am I doing this? Or why am I doing that? Not really, to be honest. Uh, when I was younger, I, I would, but um, I think it's something that a lot of people start with, and then as you as you go on this journey, you 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 start to realize like that doesn't serve you. It, it's it it's I think starting off this may come across offensive to some people. It's egoic to go well. Why? Like, well, who cares? It does. It's it's uh, why is arguing with what is. <laughs> right. Like, like it doesn't like I had a, I had a, someone applying for coaching one time and she's like, I just want to figure out why I do all this stuff. And I go, does that change anything? Does it take your problems away? Well, no, I go. So why does it fucking matter? And I, and she goes, I just don't know why I do this. I go, uh, and I literally just threw it out. Cause I knew why I said, uh, it's because you restrict your food. You had an abusive childhood and, uh, you hide your emotions with food. That's why did anything change for you just now? She goes, no. And I go, okay, let's get to the solutions. <laughs> Right. But, but too often that this is this, I don't know if you've noticed this, Mike, but this is what the ego does. The ego Mm -hmm. who does not want to change the egoic side of us wants to come in, act really productive and do nothing. Right. It's like the ego is the one that says, yeah, little chunky little girl, let's go get you lose to lose some weight. So the kids at school quit making fun of you. That's egoic as fuck, but the ego is sneaky and makes you think you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. The ego is what said, you know what, Jared, let's not be like your dad. You're going to be better than this. Let's go build something. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go do this. It served me at that lower level of consciousness. It was a level up from old Jared, but that was egoic as fuck. 
that doesn't serve me now. This is also why effort doesn't work anymore like it used to, because when we reach the state of consciousness where it's like, it's actually, if me to effort through this again, it's actually a drop in awareness. So, mm. yeah. And you start to f try to force things. Um, yeah, it's really just putting blinders on <clears throat> this past weekend. That is the event um, that I had the pleasure of speaking at. And one of the guest speakers, um, he made a reference to there is nothing wrong with you. Yep. And I thought that was really powerful because oftentimes people think like when we ask the questions like why, it's like typically something's wrong, right? Like why do I keep eating like this? Like something's wrong with me. I'm like, well, and he basically said, hey, nothing is wrong with you. You are just are. You just is. Like you just exist. Now, granted, we can make poor decisions, but that's not a you thing, right? It's like you have fat versus I am fat, mm -hmm. right? That same mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. And again, perspective on how you see things. So when you say I have fat, we can shed and lose that. But when you say I am, we're now identifying with that, which is then you can't change your identity in that nature, right? Mm -hmm. So again, changing the perspective there. But I thought that was like so interesting that he talked about that is like, there is nothing wrong with you. And I think for me as a child, like I grew up thinking like, you know, why am I not enough? And it's like, well, you are just like mm -hmm. everyone else has problems. But it's like, I just thought that was so powerful. Of yeah. Nothing's wrong with you. And then he asked somebody, uh, Ruben, the host of the event, he was like, is anything wrong with you? Ruben goes, nothing's wrong with you. Mm. And somebody was like, and then he was like, well, ask my, ask my girlfriend. <laughs> Well, so to, well, here's Are you perfect? he's like, I'm perfect. <laughs> right. Well, here, here's, here's, here's what I tell, here's the way that I have this conversation with people. And I think it caveats really well to this, um, is because I agree with you where you, every you're whoever, like you're listening to this, you're, you're great. You're perfect. You just got some patterns in the way, mm. but, but, but like, like you, you literally feel, I see people, I've seen this in like coaching sessions where I go, someone's like, well, I just struggle with this and this and this, and I'm this, I go, Hey, you're fine. You just have a pattern of hiding your emotions with food. You're not an emotional eater. That's a noun. We don't, that's not who you are. You didn't come out of the room, womb doing that, or you're not a failure. You have a pattern of failing. You're fine. You have a pattern of perfectionism that comes out when you get a little bit scared. You're fine. You have a pattern of sabotaging your results because you believe some old stories that aren't true about you. But, but, but you, I literally see it in people's eyes and energy when I go, Hey, you're fine. This is just a pattern we have to fix. And immediately the guilt dissipates. The the, mm -hmm. the, the, the the judgment goes away. Because again, you're fine. It's just your pattern that's the problem. I would even go so far to say like, let's say someone does some really fucked up shit. Really um, not so great things. It's It all came from a, a, an egoic pattern that was a problem. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, it, it, every it's, it's in most cases, it's not the person that's the problem. It's their pattern which is tied in their actions and like the story they believe about themselves or the egoic construct. That's the actual problem. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I like to lean more towards, um, good people make bad decisions. Yeah. Not that bad people make their own decisions, mm -hmm. you know, because at some point, like I just use adultery as an example, right? Like you at one point love this person through and through, and you wouldn't marry a bad person. Because mm -hmm. why would you do that? Mm -hmm. No, it's just a good person made a bad decision or decisions, right? Same thing for a person that's like gained weight, like, you know, abundance and fat. It's like, you're still a good person. You just have made like decisions that haven't best served you, which is where we are today, right? And to reverse that, we have to now say, okay, I'm still this person. Now I just want to make better decisions to get me back to where that individual I want to be, right? Become that individual. Um, yeah, that, I think that was, that's really good. I like that. I've been obsessed lately with this concept of resistance, like the internal resistance to whatever it is, because I think whenever we do anything worthwhile, whether it be, I want to get in shape, I want to start that business. I want to do whatever, uh, things are not going to go our way. Our ego gets pissy and we have this internal resistance. And if I shift you to the moon, the resistance is still there. Right. The resistance, people who think the resistance is them is the problem. It's not it's not you. It's inside you, though. 
right? So when you're faced with resistance now, whether it be an outcome that you wanted to happen didn't, or you're working on something and in, in growing and all these things are coming up for you. Like right now, me writing my book, all sorts of patterns and stories are coming up that never were here before. So how does present day Mike handle resistance? How, that's a really great question. <laughs> um, sometimes I'm still quick to like become hot headed. Mm. And so that I do a really great job of um, uh, compartmentalizing everything mm. right to where it's like, this is a business issue. I can still have my relationship, right? Like for yeah. my example, my wife, if one thing happens, everything in her life changes. Mm. So for me, I'm able to like, this can happen. I can come over here and still be happy. Then I can be pissed off over here and show up like this. I'll, you know. For me, I think the way I fight resistance now is understanding the bigger picture. It's like, is this going to be a problem in five minutes, 15, five days? Where is it at? And does it deserve this energy? I previously went through a divorce and um, a lot of things happen. And I thought to myself, does this individual deserve the space in my mind that they're currently taking up. And so that's how I kind of view things now. It's like, is this worth the energy in which I'm giving it? Am I going to allow this individual, this problem, this thing to take over my thoughts? Because the truth is, is that it, from my standpoint, anything negative doesn't deserve. It doesn't have the right to take me over. Mm. So I'm like a really calm, collected dude for the most part. <laughs> like I'm the guy that goes on vacation and I don't care what we do. Just tell me where to be. Mm. I don't care enough to have my opinion heard on certain things. Um, business related or things that I can control. I want to have an opinion on everything to some degree, right? Um, but when things don't go my way, I think what I've really, really gotten to is just trusting the process and, again, surrendering and just letting go of things I cannot control and then giving um, opportunities their space to, like, work instead of forcing things to work. Mm. So, for example, for me right now, like, I just had to let an employee go, and then I'm having to pick up and take on that responsibility. And yesterday it got me really frustrated. Because I'm sitting here doing this task that I should not be doing because somebody couldn't do their job. Mm -hmm. And it lit me on fire. And I'm sitting here going like, okay, so what are you going to do about it? You're just going to keep bitching? You're just going to keep being angry at the world? Like, how are you going to fix it? What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you got to keep answering the messages. So just get over that thought and just keep doing what you got to do. Re just do the job. Take the trash out, right? You got to take it out care how much you like stomp around the kitchen it's not going to change anything so i think resistance for me is just realizing that um it is what it is control the things you can control otherwise it doesn't get space like mm -hmm. it doesn't get any rent free rent in my head um and just work on like what is this trying to teach me and how can i move forward through it mm -hmm. because anything other than that is a waste of time and a waste of energy mm -hmm. And the truth is the life I'm trying to live doesn't have negative energy in it. Yeah. So I don't want negative people or negative things entering into my life, holding that space. Because remember, things just are, we get to decide whether they're good or bad. Yeah. But when a bad thing happens to me, somebody might be pissed on my behalf. I'm like, I'm not going to let it affect me like it's affecting you. You shouldn't let it affect you either. Like, yeah. well, can you believe that? I'm like... What do you want me to do about it? A, a mentor of mine at this, that he talked about this at this event. And I, I struggle with this one. Um, whenever something negative happens to me, I have two immediate things I follow it up with. And I don't, these aren't just affirmations. I say, these are things I am truly receiving and feeling into my body is um, whatever the bad thing happens is this is perfect. Like it's, it's, it's exactly what was supposed to happen. It's perfect. And then I ask this what is trying to emerge mm. and that so like something bad happens and I'll be shitty. I'm like, 
what's trying to emerge from this? And it's like, so ca- case in point, um, I had, uh, uh, like, for example, uh, it's because the cool thing is, I think it's, uh, it was Tony Robbins that said the quality of our life. So much of the quality of our life comes down to the quality of questions that we ask ourselves because mm. thinking is just the process of asking and answering your own questions. So if you ask a dumb question, your supercomputer of a brain is going to give you a dumb answer. The example he gives, if you goes, why am I so fat? Your brain's going to go because you're a fat sack of shit. Like you asked a dumb question, your egoic brain is going to give you a dumb answer. But if you go, how can I enjoy losing weight and enjoy every second of it? Like, oh, you love pickleball. Why don't you take a pickleball and just eat less donuts instead of all the donuts? Like your brain gets a really intelligent answer based on the quality of the question that you ask. So if something bad happens and I go, I pause. Something else I've been saying lately is there's power in the pause. When we Mm. pause, there's so much power behind that. So I pause and don't react. I pause and then ask myself, what's trying to emerge? And my brain literally will go, maybe this wasn't supposed to happen. Maybe this is building this other thing that's going to keep this other bad thing from happening. Like I recently did, uh, like at the time of filming this, like when I originally launched like my coaching group, I literally thought like 500 fucking people were going to join in 24 hours and 20 people joined in a week. And I was shitty about it. I was like, well, fuck, maybe I'm not going to be. Then my own self-doubt kicked in. I'm like, well, maybe it's not supposed to happen. Maybe I'm, am I, is it not what it's supposed to be? Maybe I'm like thinking the wrong thing. And I go, hang on, this is perfect. What's trying to emerge. And in that moment I go, it's not supposed to be big yet. I know it will be. It's not supposed to be big yet. There's probably more work that has to be done. I need to refine my systems. I need to engage in the community that's in there and ask what they want. And then we, because of that, I've built it and made it even better. And then all of a sudden the last time I opened it, it doubled. I go, ah, it's still not the number I want. What's trying to emerge? Something else needs addressed. Something else needs worked on. Something else needs improved. Um, and we added more stuff in. We got more messages from the from the members, and they go, "I want this. We want that." And we started giving it to them, and now they're happier than ever, right? So there's a way this shit's serving. So it truly is perfect. But for me, it's been really helpful whenever these bad things happen, or the or <laughs> my ego doesn't get its way. Uh. That's really all it is. Is my ego didn't get its way with anything, and I go. Everything is perfect. What's trying to emerge? And then, yeah. That's so funny because that, that's <laughs> the exact same thing that I was taught, just worded differently. Mm-hmm. So uh, post-divorce um, from an affair that had happened to me, I hired a breath coach because I, I was in a rough place. Rough like place. A, you say a breath coach, like a breath work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I tried therapy. It didn't do anything for me. I'm, I felt like I was too smart. I was like, I know all the questions you're asking me. Like, I know you're going to ask this. And I was just like, I'm just sitting here just talking. All right. And I was like, I need some modalities of something. Like, I need something to put into place. So I was like, I'm going to take a different approach. And I was like, why, 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 why? And he was like, why don't you stop saying Why? And start saying, what is this trying to teach me? Which is what is trying to emerge. Mm. And so that was the approach I take. It's like, what is it trying to teach me? He's like, maybe this is happening so that you could be here right now learning how you can be better for the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even though something was like done against me, right, for whatever reasons, but it's like now I'm going to show up and be a better husband for the next person. Yeah. Because that's gone, right? Now it's just only about what's going forward. What's trying to emerge? What am I trying to learn from this? And so it allowed me to comp- take a completely different approach and be like, how can I show up and become mm. the best version of me? What can I learn from this to take forward? And so everything, every failure, um, I'm able to move forward. And so I regularly do breath work, and I now also go to different retreats. I got one in September um, in uh, Idaho where I hold space and have a lot of these conversations with people, try to help them overcome the limiting beliefs. And every time I go into breath work, something emerges. Every time. Like, it's, it's, it never fails. And one of the things I had to do during that process is – True forgiveness is forgiving all parties, not select parties. So everybody that does wrong against you, whether it's direct or indirect, like we have to forgive. Yeah. 
Step one in moving past something is forgiveness. Well, I did that. I found that the next phase for me was being thankful for the wrongdoings. Wow. That's so like being, an ego death right there. Having to be thankful that my dad was hard on me because of where it allowed me to get to today. Thankful for the hard conversations. Thankful for the mishaps in the marriage. Thankful for the business partners that screwed me over. Thankful for everybody that's done something against Mike and his person. Forgive yourself for things you've done to yourself. Mm. And then from there, I was actually truly able to get past it. Like, man, I'm thankful that all these bad things happened to me. Oh, you think you can hurt me now? Mm -hmm. I'm invincible. Yeah. And so for me, that was like the second awakening yeah. of being able to like really turn it on. And I would say that was in the last, uh, that happened in May-ish. And wow. it's kind of just ever been just dialing up, dialing up. So I'm like super stoked mm -hmm. to see what happens in September at this next yeah. Because I'm like, now we're, we've done the second awakening. Like, where's the third yeah. at? Well, so here's, here's the thing I think that, that's really cool to, to bring up is, um, is for you to do breath work, um, you have to be undistracted. You have to be inside. Like, you, you most pit in time, you're, you're in silence. You're, you're, you're in the present moment. Like a mentor of mine, the same mentor I keep referring back to, he always says breathing because it reminds you you're here. It, it almost forces you to be present and be where your feet are. Um, it makes you undistracted. This is why for me, it would be, I didn't do meditation. I had, I was challenged uh, by a, this mentor of mine um, to meditate for an hour every single day. So I was actually at this spiritual event and on top of this nine to five spiritual event, my wife and I got up every day. I always say I woke up to sleep where I woke yeah. up to sit in silence yeah, with my kidding. eyes closed, but I was awake. I didn't like not falling asleep, but quite literally, uh, and, and my old patterns come up. I the most I, long as I'd never meditated in one sitting was like 25, 30 minutes. But mm -hmm. dude, I could feel when that moment hit of like 25, 30 and my pattern would be to want to get up. And I didn't. And I just sat in the resistance. I sat in the, I don't like the dog doesn't want to sit anymore. He wants to go on the walk. And, and it's like, I met this other self because mm -hmm. you'll notice this is, I, I always say like, it's the same thing. Breath work, set it, meditation, sitting in silence, whatever, being undistracted heals so many things because you can't ignore these parts of you because they decide to come up. But a lot of people take it as a sign. Something's wrong. Hey, I said, I tried meditating. My mind wouldn't shut up. I must not be doing it right. No, no, that means you're, you are doing it right. You haven't earned yeah. the right for it to be a Zen. It's not, it's <laughs> silent. It's not thoughtless because yeah. you cannot be thoughtless. Well, to that though, like how can, if you think of it this way, how can you fix the relationship with another person? If you avoid that person, if Mike, if you and I have a beef, if you offended me or if I offended you and we want to resolve this, but we won't sit in the same fucking room and have a hard conversation, we'll never resolve it. And everyone agrees with that, right? We can't avoid a, a, a conversation with someone and, or we can't avoid someone and heal through a relationship. So how the fuck do yeah. you think you're going to fix the relationship with you or these parts of you? Right. But if you won't yeah. sit in silence with yourself and do breath work or just listen to silence and be, see with what comes up, you know, that's, that's the key to like, someone says, how does someone fix the relationship with themselves? I'm like, how about you be with yourself for more than five fucking minutes without scrolling on your phone or watching Ooh, TV or I whatever. I was to say that. I was like, <laughs> the workaholic, the addicted scroller, the person that's always got to be doing something with a bag, hand in a bag. Like if you're always having to do something and you feel fidgety, all you're actually doing is running from the thing that you don't actually want to think about. Mm -hmm. And that's something I struggled with a lot is like sitting still is difficult. See, now I, in, in my journeys, I found that when I do breath work alone, it is not the same as guided. I agree. Now, one of, like they're, they're great for self meditation and doing those things to keep habit and routine. Right. I find that when it's something is guided or it is a group setting, it is actually more trauma inducing to me. And I think that's because we respond to other people's emotions. And I'm a big advocate of energy. Mm -hmm. When I have the person beside me starting to make noise, like I can hear their emotions. 
Like it's just like the, the when somebody's crying on TV, we feel some type of way, mm-hmm. and we we basically bring on that emotion. And it's like if you try to fight the cry, you can do it alone. It's really hard to fight the cry when you're in a room with thirty other people crying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. And so that's what took over you essentially is like you just become overwhelmed with these emotions. Yeah. And when you do breath work, you're actually basically bringing those things to the surface. Um, you're actually, in my mind. You're just bringing out everything else. You're only going inward. Mm. And like, I find that like my goal is when I do breath work is like, I want to dig as deep as possible. And most people try to run from the pain. And I'm like, no, the only way to fix it is to find it. So how do I go in as far as possible to fix those things? Mm. Because I view myself as like, where do I want to go? What do I want to feel? And if I want to get there, then I need to remove the baggage and the weight to get there. And so that's the same thing when it comes to like, you know, dieting and looking your part, like how you want to be. Like we have to get rid of all these other things to become that thing because this person, right, the thermostat for those that know Ed Milet, for you to become that, you have to start acting in that nature because mm-hmm. you can't just become it by doing this person. What's the phrase? Like for you to become the, the new person, the old one must die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same concept. Yeah. But it's like, but we have to become aware of who that person is that has mm-hmm. to die. And I think mm-hmm. the, the, the silence is going to allow you to find that. Because here's the thing. It's going to find you or you're going to find it. And I promise you, you don't want it to find you. No. That's when burnout, that's when breakdown, that's when all the bad shit happens. All of it. Yeah. That's so good, dude. I'm so glad this conversation went here. I love it so much. I have a video I'm, I'm going to send you once uh, once we're off um, along these lines. There was actually a clip of uh, so at that event I was at in LA with with uh, it was Kyle Cease's event if you know who that is and he uh, and uh, they did uh, open panel Q and A and they they recorded everything and uh, and there was a along these lines there, they, they actually caught my question. So on his YouTube video, there's a question where, where I'm asking the question I've been wanting to ask along these lines about how to separate like attachment from outcome with surrender. But I want the thing it's, it's the ultimate dichotomy of my wrist tattoos, which is ambition and equanimity. That's my wrist tattoos. Um, and it was the most beautiful answer across the board with all three of these like spiritual teachers. And, uh, and, and uh, I've sent it to a few friends of mine and they're like, holy shit, like that makes so much sense. And I think I, I think it'll resonate with you a lot. So I'll, I, I, once we get off here, I'll, I'll text it to you. It's, it's so and you can see like this was the day before my breakthrough and you can look do you can tell I'm about to pop like <laughs> like like you can tell like it's not just stage lights like I'm was like holding yeah. like I was like trying to ask this question and not get emotional. And but it was the next day I popped <laughs> like. <laughs> when was this again? How many weeks ago from this? Two months ago, maybe six weeks ago. Okay. What's the yeah. biggest thing that's changed in your life? <clears throat> that's changed. Like outcome that's changed in my life or just in general? Whatever comes to mind. Uh, I've let, I've let go of so much. I don't have to control anything. I don't, it's actually gotten to the point where like, I don't want to control everything. Well, it's also, you realize you can't control anything. What's that? You just realize that you also, you can't control anything. Not just that I can't, I don't want to. There's a difference because like knowing that you can't, but still, because here's the truth. We all know, I think deep down, we can't control everything, but we try to. And that's what causes anxiety and worry and frustration and your, your energy getting bad. But when I go, I don't think I want to control it anymore. Not just because I can't, but it's like, there's something else out there that I, I think I want controlling it. God, the universe, higher consciousness, whatever you want, whatever your thing is, but where it's like, you know what, there's something else bigger at hand here and I don't want to control it anymore. I want to let that thing control it um, mm. where I'm just a piece in this now where because yep. now I'm uh, I'm in harmony with it. And it, there that's been the biggest the biggest thing is is it is went from like I can't control everything to is I don't think I want to anymore. I think there's mm. things unknown to me, my pesky little intellect that I don't see and it's okay. And I'm just in the now and I'm present for what is. And if things aren't going the way my ego wants, that's perfect because it shouldn't have happened. Um, and then I'm just letting go of all attachment as much as I can. It's, it's like my wrist tattoos of ambition and equanimity. I've leaned too much in the past on ambition 
And now I'm like that scale is tipping towards equanimity of emotional neutrality, letting go of outcomes and this whole concept of like a, a high intention, low attachment. Like my goals have gone from a, I have to kill this thing. I have to accomplish this to it'd be dope if I did that. It would be, that's kind of, I guess my intention, but I'm not attached. If something else has a bigger vision for this, that's okay. And I'm going to trust that thing. So, so one, so the tattoo on my wrist, uh, is flourish. <laughs> okay. A little different than sacrifice and discipline flourish. Um, it's so different. <laughs> so different. Well, that's, that's the difference of 15 years of maturing as an adult. Um, but one of the things that I talk about whenever I do like personal development speeches is, and I'd like for people listening, if you'd like to dive into this, you can hit pause on this, write these things down, press play, hit pause again. But basically it's take a sheet of paper and write down, right down the middle of it. On the left-hand side, want, and the right-hand side, worry. And I like to basically think, take the next five minutes and write down all things that you want and all things that you worry about. You don't have to do one list and the other. You just write what comes to mind. And when you write that down, right, this is where you would pause and do that. So when you look at your list, you want to see where your energy goes. Is all of your energy on the worry side of the list? And you're living in this, this um, fear mindset, this scarcity mindset. You're so concerned about what the outcome is. Or are you focused more on the want side where you're going to be more in that abundance mindset? You're going to be more on this achiever mindset, the ambition side, um, going towards positivity versus negativity. And I found that when I did this, and I find this very interesting for people, and it's also, too, like when you look at your list, how detailed is your wants? Because typically our worries are super detailed. Granular. But our wants are so vague. And what that basically means is that you're not actually thinking about that thing in enough granular detail to actually devise a plan to achieve it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you say, I want to make more money, that's a wish. That's not a want. And wishes um, are useless. Wishes do nothing for you. Right? They're actually, because you can't wish up something into, like put a plan in place on a wish. A want, you can, because now you say, I want to make 10K a month. Let's devise a plan on how to actually get there. Right? Also take note at your list and view. Do you have a want and a worry? And it's the same thing. Right. So do you say, I want a good husband. I don't want uh, a cheater. It's like those actually don't work because you're thinking on both sides of the coin, which is still going to make you worrying about this good husband being a cheater. Right. So you're actually coming out of a place of pain when you make that decision. So my five wants that I put down when I was asked to make this list and I'm trying to keep this non-emotional because it breaks me down every time. Hell I yeah. said that I, I wanted to live in Florida. I said that I wanted to enjoy a view with a cup of coffee. I wanted to have a great team. Of course, my business team. Um, I wanted to um, play golf. And I wanted to spend more time with Paula, my wife. And I thought to myself, Just can't do it. I thought to myself, how terrible of a list of wants. How pathetic. And I basically talking to Paula about this. She goes, it sounds to me like you have everything that is you want. Perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to laugh and some coffee. <laughs> Live in a warm place with some palm trees. Like... All those things are achievable. Yeah. And that's the next phase of this is out of all these things that you wrote down, how many can you do right now? Mm. That's the powerful piece in this is because we delay our happiness when we actually can achieve certain things right now. 
I think that's the biggest thing people do. Because it's like, well, I'll start my diet on Monday. Will you? <laughs> right. And so it's like you could start today and achieve happiest now instead of living the entire weekend in this like guilty mindset and then waking up and hoping Monday is just going to be perfect when it's not. It needs to be 80%. Yeah. Right. And then you're like, well, I'm a failure. I'm going to start next Monday. Right. And so that same mentality carries on another thing. So um, make, make that list of like what your wants mm-hmm. are and then like go after those. And I find that myself going back to the original idea of this entire podcast. I actually think I really struggle with goals. Yeah. I really struggle with like, <clears throat> what do I actually want? So I do all the journey, but never actually get to a destination. There's no celebrations to celebrate because I haven't uh, arrived yeah. at a place in which I previously set for myself. I struggle with that too. Um, I think this is also a pattern thing, like uh, like a pattern of worry or a pattern of not setting something out of like maybe a self, something self-preservation of like, well, if I don't set a granular target, I can't fail. Mm. Right. But you live in, I do the same thing. It's not something that my guy Kyle said at this last event that just like kicked me in the teeth. Cause again, I, from childhood, from my stuff, um, I can work. I'm, I've got like a PhD in worry. I can like, I'm telling you, I can worry <laughs> and I can, what if better than anyone? There are two things. Number one is worrying is just having that like insane level of faith in all the wrong things. Mm. Like we talk about like faith, it's like, so in, like all this. because worry is not real. Right. But, but also, but it's having faith in, in all the wrong things. That's all it is. Is worry is just having faith in all the, all the wrong stuff, but then you're emotionally charging it. So you're attracting it. Here's the one that kicked me in the teeth. Worry doesn't mean you care more. Mm. Like me worrying about whatever money or, uh, or an outcome or family or whatever. Worrying doesn't mean I care more. And I found out my perspective shift. One of the many I had at this event was I, I have, I think I had a fear if I quit worrying, it means I don't care. And it was this massive reality shift. Whereas like where worry doesn't mean you care more. So if you're like, I'm worried about whatever the outcome is, like something like surface level, like what the scale says or worried about, you know, what, this person thinks about me or whatever. It's like, well, the worry doesn't mean you care more. It's just a pattern that's keeping you stuck. I love that. (laughs) I love that because like, it's, it's so true is that you have so much faith in something not working. It's like, why don't you put that towards something of actually Mm -hmm. achieving the outcome, the desired outcome that you want? Yeah. Because it's again, it's the same amount of energy, positive or negative. You choose my friend. Yeah. You choose. And here's the, the real thing about it is that, there is nothing that one person can do that is another one can't. Mm-hmm. Like when it really comes to what we worry about, what we want to achieve, which I think is really just like, you know, joy, bliss, love, happiness, prosperity. You are that right now. Mm-hmm. You just choose not to see it that way. Yeah. That's so good. This is a, this, this this turned out way better than I. I, I already knew this was going to be a good conversation, but it turned out even better. Like I come into like, especially with you, like I had like no notes because I know I don't need them. Like you know, so uh, he's like, this guy talks plenty. I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, this has been great, man. I really appreciate this more than more than you know. Um, where can people find you if they want to learn more about you or, and, and things like that? Man, the best place to find me is on Instagram, Mike underscore Krausen, C-R-O-W-S-O-N. That's the easiest place to get in contact with me. I love it. I love it. Mike, I appreciate you. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate your mentorship and um, everything in between. So this has been this has been. Yeah, man. Before I go, everybody listening, guys, I'm going to ask you to do a favor. Please go um, leave a review on this podcast for Jared. The man puts out tons of great content, (laughs) a lot of special guests. He's not going to ask for it. I'm going to ask on his behalf. So if you've been watching and you've got any value, please like, subscribe, share, <laughs> leave the reviews, help him help more people. That's dope, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course, I love it, man. Well, I appreciate this uh, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, brother. And we are back. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. I know if you stuck around this whole time, you got a lot of value out of this. I love the way this conversation went. It was so much fun. Um, And this is the epitome of why why dieting from the inside out is so powerful because you do the inner work. You change your inner reality, your inner game, and your external reality 
just happens to start mirroring it. It's a beautiful thing. So like Mike said, I didn't know he was going to say that, but like Mike said, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to leave a review. Um, share this with someone who you think needs it. And before you go, I have a lot of things in the description for you. Number one, um, we'll definitely leave a link to connect with Mike so you can follow him on Instagram and see what he's got going on. Um, also, the other things I have for you, in case depending on where you're at while you're watching or listening to this, you may be in a few different spots. If you're just getting started with my content, and you're not quite sure what way is up and you're not sure where to get started or what direction to go and all this information is kind of all over the place, start with my fat loss checklist video course. It's a mini course. It's a five day thing. It will go right to your email and it will change everything for you with the way that you view weight loss, dieting and making this game ungodly simple. Okay. Second spot, excuse me. Second thing I have for you is if you have not joined my fat loss simplified free community, you'll want to go there as well. Because if you're the kind of person who does well with uh, being around other like-minded people, right? You may, if you're wa watching and listening to this, you're probably in like a dozen other Facebook groups or you're following a dozen other people like me or what have you. And the thing is though, that can get really crowded and that can get really loud in your head because this person says this and this person says this, or half the groups you might be following are just like the blind leading the blind and that kind of thing. And I don't want that for you. So I have a magical little spot called Fat Loss Simplified. It's on Facebook. It's totally free. You don't have to pay for anything where I'm, where I have myself and about 10,000 other men members at the time of recording this and, um, right in there right now. And I put content resources and free help in there more than probably you would get with like a, a lot of these other paid coaching programs or paid gr group coaching programs, things like that. So I have all that in there right now, ready to go for you. Just add yourself, answer the questions, and then I'll be sure my staff lets you in. And then finally, if you are sick and tired of doing this on your own and you're like, you know what? I, I think I'm ready to take the leap and I want someone to help me with this so we can end the struggle once and for all forever. So I have, so I don't have to keep trial trialing and airing this on my own. You could always apply for coaching. I'll, I have a couple different coaching options and there's some, there's a link below to apply and then we can see what's the best fit, assuming any of it's the right fit. Okay. So otherwise that is it for today's episode. I love you and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me and I'll talk to you next week.